Well, hello again. Uh, I'm all dressed up today. We got a tuxedo on. Uh, this is Buck Benny with, of course, my friend Terry Phillips and Catherine Fuller Seeley. And uh, Terry uh, does his own uh, radio show uh, sort of thing, and he's done two episodes so far. He's working on the third, I believe, as we talk, which right. is awesome. And he doesn't have his little ad up today, which is, uh, I'm oh, sure yeah. he's got it somewhere. He'll dig it up in his room somewhere. Look, there we go. There we go. It's imagine-air-theater.com, and you'll get there, and it is awesome. And then uh, Kathy fuller Seely has, yep, yep. has her book support. I'm looking around. I, uh, I have my shilling back of me. So. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and we have her book. This is, this is her first book. This is the one I love. It's awesome. Great one to read all about Jack Benny. And then we have her second book which I also love. This book is more for, though, if you want to read scripts. This is all full of scripts of the Jack Benny show that are missing, that are that are the episodes okay. that are lost. And we've and just started production on volumes two and three. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. I cannot wait. I really am excited about that. And I hope she goes and does all the lost scripts uh, because I think they're worthy of being saved. And as it keeps going... They just get better and better and better, like Jack always does. So, which is awesome. Well, today we're we're here. Uh, well, first, uh, John's not here, as you can see. And I was just going to mention because John sometimes listens to these uh, afterwards. And I was uh, John had spent the entire summer, the whole summer, every single week, talking about Buck Benny on his uh, radio show. So I just think it was so cool that he spent the entire summer talking about me on his radio show, and I. <laughs> I just want to thank John for that, for featuring me exclusively on his show uh, the entire summer. And I, I wasn't expecting that. I guess I, I, in return, I need to spend all next summer talking about John. But I don't think I'll do that because I have other things to talk about. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> I'm sure John will back at some point. <laughs> um, we, today, we uh, are celebrating Johnny Carson. Uh, because Johnny Carson's birthday is coming up here on the, Terry, the 22nd. 23rd. 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 Yay. And uh, so the next two weeks will be Johnny Carson's specials. Next week will be with Jack Benny again for his first appearance with Jack Benny. We played his second appearance with Jack Benny already. But uh, Terry uh, shared something with us a couple weeks ago, which was uh, Johnny Carson with the Rat Pack uh, all uh, together. And I thought it was so interesting. And when I went to search for it on YouTube, I found the entire hour and a half program versus the clip we played. And some folks have asked, where'd that come from? What was the clip from? So we'll get all into that today. And then we'll play the whole hour and a half show for you guys too, which I think you'll really enjoy. And that's why my tuxedo is a little bit to go with that. Plus we're gonna introduce Orson Welles later, but that's a different podcast entirely. But that's the other reason I'm looking a little like Citizen Kane. So without further ado, let's go into Terry where he's gonna tell us about the show. Go ahead, Terry. Well, well first, as all good, uh in my case, former news reporters should do when they make a mistake, I have a correction. Uh, when we talked about this last time, I said that they were performing in Las Vegas and the Rat Pack and Johnny Carson frequently performed in Las Vegas, but this was not in Las Vegas. It was in St. Louis and it was a benefit for um, a halfway house called Dismas House, which was, uh, I think, the first halfway house, a place where former convicts could... Uh, live and uh, make the transition back to civilian life yeah and the uh, the um, event even though it was called the the uh, frank sinatra spectacular was organized by the head of the teamsters union in st louis ah. whose name uh, was harold gibbons he was probably going to be the next head of the National Teamsters Organization. There's a long, complicated political story to go with that. Sure. But he's the guy who actually introduces Johnny Carson in this clip. That was um, Harold Gibbons. Oh, okay. The clip that we're going to see, the hour and a half clip that we're going to have, is only half the show. Wow. There was another hour and a half, which wow. included performances by the Step Brothers and Kay Stevens and Trini Lopez. I don't think there's anyone who was on this um, program who was still living um right the place where it Trini was Lopez was uh until uh, just a, few months a couple ago, of months ago that's right he, just passed he died away. in August that's right uh, the uh, the event took place in the Keel Opera House uh in downtown St. Louis 
which um, was built in 1934 and was open until 1991. Then it shut down for about 20 years and it was a wonderful old historical building. There was talk of demolishing it and uh, a group of, uh, of uh, business people in St. Louis decided to restore it, which was done and it was reopened in, uh, in uh, 20 years after that. So 2011, I think it reopened, yeah. no, sorry, 20, yeah, 20, 2011 it reopened. Uh, and it's been a venue for a lot of great performances, but this particular one with the remnants of the Rat Pack, I say remnants because there was a missing member, um, yes. which was Joey Bishop, who was supposed to be the host of that event. And as Johnny Carson explains, uh, Joey was unable to, uh, to make it. And I don't want to spoil his story to go along with that, but that's how Johnny uh, got roped into it by, by Frank right. Sinatra. And, and Johnny, that was the nice purpose. I, I love the fact that when Johnny comes on, he says, uh, he's talking about the, what a great charity it is and so forth, but it sure feels like he forgot either the name of it or what it was because he never mentions what it is. He just says, well, it's a charity I really believe in and it's close to my heart or whatever. And then he goes right. off. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, but the Dismas House, which was uh, named after Father uh, Dismas Clark, who was a Jesuit priest who helped, uh, they, they used to call him the hoodlum priest because yeah. he helped ex-cons uh, transition into uh, into uh, civilian life. So this was a charity benefit yeah. for that event. And as they, they make reference to in the, in the clip, uh, it was also shown on closed circuit television and it was seen in New York and, and I don't remember right. where all else. Uh, and CBS was filming the event. They were doing a special about Sinatra also and about the Red right. Pack. So it, was, it, was, it really was a spectacular, which they used to call TV specials back yeah. in the day. Well, I and love the fact that it is, the, it is the, the peak of these folks' um, not not only their success, but their but their their quality of their performance and everything. I mean, I think as you go into the '70s, they start to get older and things. This is like right where the Rack Pat was at its absolute strongest uh, in performance and everything. And I think we really see that throughout the performances. But Kathy, you were going to say something. Oh, no. What's the date of this performance? This was a June 20th, 1965. Uh, and it was I not think only... interesting in that it's, you can tell it's 65. Cal, Cal was 18 months old at that time. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> a little ad for Tab, which is going well, away, I unfortunately. I've seen them maybe with their cigarettes and, you know. It, it, oh, there's uh, there's so much, tab, you know. Yeah. So much that you wouldn't see uh, in a in any public performance today. The jokes that they made, the yes. things that would be considered politically incorrect today. Yes. The other thing I found amazing was the power that Sinatra had to bring in all these other performers who, as I said, we won't see in this this 90 minute clip, but he had two of the most famous band leaders in America, Count Basie and Quincy Jones. Yes. Uh, it was just an, an overwhelming- And you see Quincy, event. do you see Count Basie? I can't remember. You do, yeah. Oh, you do, okay. Yep. That's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's just neat to see these folks in their prime on their doing their, doing awesome work. And, uh, and, and, and the fact that, that, like you're saying, you can tell it's 65 because this is pre the death of, well, all kinds of folks. So, so this is after, of course, uh, JFK dies. They mentioned LBJ. But they also, um, besides uh, that, they, they mentioned like um, Malcolm X. And this is before Malcolm X passes, dies, wow. and gets killed. Months. Yeah, yeah. It's the same year that he dies the same year in 65, but it's before because obviously they make a joke about it and they wouldn't do that otherwise. Um, but there's a lot of jokes about protesting here. There's about a joke about uh, telling Johnny what's it feel like to be in the back of the bus by Sammy. Uh, there's just a lot, a, a lot more risque humor that is on the end of, of uh, uh, political type humor that you wouldn't normally get on television probably. And I think that's really interesting. Yeah, racial jokes, religious jokes, all kinds of things that were uh, common currency for performers uh, in the 60s, which right. we don't hear or see anymore. The uh, the other thing that, that I loved watching was uh, the impressions that they did. Yes, yes. No one was better at it than Sammy Davis Jr. for imitating other uh, famous singers. And he did an amazing job of that. And uh, and they all they all were impressed. Yeah, yes, yeah. All well, that whole bit that. that he does during his set, it's uh, I think it's the last song in his set. I'm sure it's the last song in his set. Yeah. Uh, he imitates so many people 
uh, including he does a, a really nice, and they're all great. And you can really see it really, like, it's kind of neat to see them back to back because you don't realize in your head how different their performance styles are. And then when you, when he does it, you go, Oh, wow. If I close my eyes, I can, I mean, he nails every single one. of them. And beginning with, before he does the, the vocal impression, beginning with the physical impression of Fred Astaire. Yes. Yes. A, a great Fred. And you, and you don't realize either that Fred had such a, a noticeable walk and everything, but he did. And, and then when he does uh, Dean Martin, he introduces every single person he talks about that he does, including Dean Martin. And he does a hilarious Dean Martin. And then he does a Jerry Lewis that he doesn't mention Jerry Lewis, but he just goes right into a Jerry Lewis from Dean Martin. And I thought that was kind of a cool way to end it. And uh, that is probably my favorite section of the entire show is when he does that. Later on, they act like he's going to do something similar, but then they keep on stopping him when he comes to the microphone. And, and, and it ends up being that uh, Dean Martin and, and Frank Sinatra do most of the impressions. And they're pretty, <laughs> you, they're not quite as you, good as impressions as he is. But, if you, you know, didn't know right. that these guys were such good friends. Yes. I think that they hated each other because of how much they picked on each other, particularly how much they picked on Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. Uh, but they obviously were very tight and, and had been doing this act together for a long time. And this right. is uh, the, the other wonderful thing about their performances that it all seems spontaneous but they've been doing this this uh, stuff this material for a long time right so they, they all I mean it was really a well planned well choreographed and well performed uh, bit that seemed yeah. to be spontaneous well it goes back to kind of the time of vaudeville when you'd come yeah. and perform all over the country the same bit over and over again and Jack noticed when he went to radio oh my gosh I have to come up with new material every week well these guys didn't have to do that they would uh, I would assume if you followed them around the country, they, it would be pretty similar all over the place. I mean, oh, even sure. though the things aren't scripted, they repeat some of the same things, I would assume, over and over again. And Daryl, uh, did you notice how well-dressed... Uh, I, I appreciate that you put the uh, the tux on today. Thank you, thank you. My T-shirt. But did you notice how well the audience was dressed? Yes, yes. They, they were dressed up to come see it. Oh. And audiences dressed up a lot back then to go see uh, the different performances. I think if you just went to a regular Frank Sinatra concert by himself, they'd be pretty dressed up. I don't think it was just on this occasion, but that is something audiences just don't do anymore, is get dressed that up much, to a concert. Well, yeah. Now, with, um, is uh, this uh, performance, this video, sort of considered lost or not played for a long time? So, it, you know, it, was, it, it, it wasn't rerun on television or something. That's like right. That. It was lost. Uh, it was discovered, um, I'm going to say, in the uh, early 2000s. Uh, it's available on DVD. I think the whole thing is available on DVD. Right. And um, uh, yeah, it for and it's as far as I've been able to determine, it is the only uh, recording of an entire performance by the Rat Pack, even though, again, I hasten to add, Joy Bishop wasn't there. Yeah. And I guess you'd include Peter Lawford in that um, in that right. group also. But certainly of the, the three main singers, it's, as far as I've been able to tell, the only existing uh, recording of them doing a whole show. Right, right. And I'm so glad, like I say, that it's 65 instead of 75. I mean, I think I think this catches them at their, at their absolute peak, and I think that's fantastic. I will, if I can I find the show, like, so over funny. on... Go ahead. Yeah. If I can find the show over oh, on Amazon or something. So skinny, so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I will, I will, I will post it. So look in the show notes, and I'll put the link to to buying it on Amazon if it's there for the whole thing. If you want to see the whole three hours, especially with Trini Lopez, because I've been getting into Trini Lopez music now that he's passed away, and realized how what a great fun singer he was. Uh, his songs just are so uplifting. They're they're just uh, really. Um, excellent to even just listen to recordings of. Uh, I, I did want to say about tonight's performances, I, every person struck me in a different way. The, when, uh, when Johnny comes on, Johnny is just fun and he's just Johnny behind the scenes, Johnny, different Johnny than you get so much on the Johnny Carson show. And I think that's a, a lovely piece at the beginning. Then it goes into Dean Martin. Dean Martin's set is like, a Dean Martin greatest hits album just put in there. And man, the guy seems like he's, he, at least he either plays like he's completely wasted or he is completely wasted. And yet he pulls it when, as soon as he starts singing, man, it is 
perfect. And he can stumble around like between verses and things and then and then goes nails it every time. He'll look like he's about ready to fall over and be singing and still hit every note. And uh, just the ease with which he presents it is just beautiful and his comfort with the audience. I mean, that guy was slick. And then after that comes Sammy Davis Jr. And his performance, I mean, uh, he's like Mr. Showbiz, I think is his nickname, right? And he just explodes. And and you don't realize what a great performer he is to just see him do song after song after song that that he just, you can tell his whole heart, his whole soul, his body, he, he throws everything into his performance. And uh, I, I found his section to probably be the most entertaining of all of them. Uh, then it's funny because then then uh, Frank comes out and Frank's performance is kind of um, a little what it's, it's just not to me of the same level as those other two. It's like, OK, here's Frank and he's the chairman. And he's the, the big linchpin of the whole thing. Now, on the other hand, he's been hanging around for three hours waiting to perform probably at that point. So that's got to also wear on you or whatever. So uh, he does a good job, but it's I just different. Violin. What was that, Kathy? That's the world's tiniest violin. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. A, <laughs> so, so, uh, but, but, uh, but I, I, do, I do enjoy his performance as well, especially he sings, um, one of the songs he sings is You Make Me Feel So Young. And that song, uh, my daughter already knows that when and she gets married sometime in the future that I'm going to be dancing with that song with her. Uh, the whole time when she, we have like pictures of when she's like six months old and I'm dancing around to her with that song. And I've danced around with that song with her for years. And so that will be really fun. Um, oh, and lovely. so that's a special song for me. And so when it played it, I was like, yeah. So um, it was a wonderful performance. And then seeing them all together at the end, is that's where our, our clip came from a few weeks ago that we played. Uh, but that end sequence with all of them talking and everything, it's, it's just a lot of fun to see them joking around together. Um, anyway, Kathy, what did you think of the whole thing? But, well, um, it's fascinating. I, I'm I'm young enough that the, you know that's I was uh, you know uh, I was a Beatles fan from the, like the time I uh, it was three. So it's fascinating, and and sort of that's my view of the '60s is the pop going to rock culture, and it it always I, I you know a little kid watching TV and to see these adult performers. And know that it's something maybe older, that more like my grandparents' generation. I'm just, I was that young. Yes. My parents were a rock music fan. But it's fascinating to think that these different streams were both thriving in the decade. And we tend to put on blinders and say, oh, it was only rock music in the 60s or the pop revolution. But to say, you know, that there was this whole lively stream, as well as the Lawrence Wilkes and maybe old Liberace up here for the old folks. And then the hee-haw music over here for, you know, that's, uh, so the, the variety and richness of, of musical and entertainment culture in America is um, so enriched by finds like right. this because we tend to flatten it out to only this was going on. And so I, um, I want to watch it again and, um, uh, and learn from it, as you, just as I'm learning from, uh, from um, your marvelous comments here about um, there is a, a decade I thought I knew everything about. There is so much more right. to, uh, uh, to learn and experience of its richness. Exactly. Well, and just like you say, um, that I didn't think about until this moment when you're mentioning it, but I wonder how they felt because they have, uh, an, uh, they're, they're doing this thing. They're in the peak of their powers. They're doing this, this great. And they feel like if you went back uh, to 1962, right, just three years earlier, they would probably feel like, oh, we're going to dominate the musical scene for decades yeah. to come. We've dominated it throughout the 50s for Frank from the 40s on up, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the Beatles hit in 64, right? 65, you have the Rolling Stones uh, coming out with their first song. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, yeah. I don't and, get no satisfactions so out there. My Generation by The Who is out there. Yeah. The Doors' first album comes out in 65. 
uh, the, the Beach right Boys are really start, taking off. Yeah. Everybody's just whoa, the whole music yeah. industry. So suddenly, crazy. you notice a generation. Get, you know, there's a new generation of yes. music in the same way that, just as you say, Frank Sinatra in the mid '40s. What the Bobby Sockers, Bobby Soxers, excuse me, you know, that he yeah. helped grow the music industry. And, and indeed, perhaps what was happening in the 60s, you're right, perhaps they felt like, oh, no, we're appealing, our, our audience is aging up. And right. these young darn kids, you know, what are they doing with the long hair and the protests and all these kind of things? But what it was actually doing was growing the industry in size. Yeah. Both sort of replacing them and pushing them up. But it's not like they weren't selling records. So the Correct. whole music industry was just growing. Yes. And that's interesting. So. Agreed. And well, and how many people had record players at that time, even more than the 50s, it really caught on. And so, yeah, there, yeah. there were the baby boomers were hitting the right age that they could now buy a bunch of albums and things. So, of course, they created things that they would want to get. Um, I just love the fact that the Who sang My Generation, baby, which was, of course, saying hey we're, we're taking the handoff from Sinatra's generation and from these guys yeah. and, I don't and, know. and then I hope I die before I get old but they're all 75 now so yeah exactly yeah yeah that's true and they're still releasing albums some of them so and some really good stuff uh Terry anything else you have to say about this whole thing well just building off what uh Kathy said if uh you were watching television in the mid 60s you were seeing all of this the, it all did flow together mm -hmm. Plus, of course, all the great folk music that was being performed yeah, yeah. in those years. And the very same people who might have come to, uh, maybe not this concert because it was a, a benefit and I'm guessing the tickets were a little pricier, but, but those who might have watched Sinatra uh, on television would have seen in the same night all of these other uh, acts, all these other genres of music that uh, we're talking about here. And even though it was a very contentious time, if you look at at uh, what was going on in the country and in the world. It was a very tense, yes. frankly, revolutionary time. Um, we did have something in common, which is we could listen to each other's music. That might be less true today, I'm not sure. Right. Uh, but, but even though there was, of course, kidding about, you know, your kind of music and my kind of music, uh, still, it was all heard and it was all in the same uh, marketplace. Right. And, and right. I, I miss that. You know, I was... Let's see, 1965, I, I was uh, 13 years old, 12 the years The diversity old. that was there in the marketplace versus now. Yeah. yeah. Or at least the diversity of what could sell and be popular versus now. Is well, that's correct. it. The, the music is still there. It's just it's not on the radio anymore, and right. nobody's buying it. But it's, right. it's all on the Internet, right. uh, which is – and hooray that, on the other hand, the Internet gave us this spectacular. Uh, oh, well, let me give you guys a uh, – a, uh, what preview a a uh, little insight that a lot of people don't have uh we have been speculating over on i, I go to the steve hoffman uh music forum and we talk about lots of things but one of the things we talk about the most is paul mccartney because we're there's a huge amount of setup we a bunch of us were on the paul mccartney forum site and just got tired of them talking about how great his hair was and they wish he wore tight pants again and whatever. I mean, there's there this whole <laughs> other, and we were talking about the music is what we were into. So then all of a sudden somebody posted that, that they were talking about him in musical ways over on the Steve Hoffman forum. So a bunch of us went over there. So then a Hoffman forum got angry at us because they're, <laughs> He kind of took over their forum with Paul McCartney stuff. <laughs> and that was, about, that was about a decade ago. But since then, I mean, if a Paul McCartney album's coming out, I mean, most of their most of their forum posts or whatever get like three pages or five pages of, of posts, right? If there's a Paul McCartney coming out, we've, we've had, I think the most we've ever had is where you, we've, we've gone like, uh, uh, they used to cut it at, at a thousand posts. You'd have to start a new thing after a thousand posts well one of his albums we did 27 1000 posts where they always had to start us on a new one this would be part two part three part now and then it got to part 27 uh, and what's always funny is you end up with um like the first 25 of them will be pre-album where everybody's like what's gonna be on it what's it gonna be like what's it gonna be? then the album comes out and everybody's like oh this was really good i really enjoyed this or this or this or i didn't like this that much or whatever for like another 
two parts and then it stops and then it's just kind of done and it, it's the speculation that that fills the thing so anyway somebody got wind uh, a month ago i don't know that that paul was going to be during this covid time he had recorded another album and he's recorded these albums by himself at times one was called mccartney that was released in 1970 and then 1980 there was mccartney 2 we, a bunch of us had hoped that in 1990 he'd release McCartney three and 19, in 2000 he'd release McCartney four, but he never did that again. He just he never visited it again. But now in COVID, he was alone and couldn't be really with producers and everything at the time. So, so he supposedly recorded another album like those first two, and called it McCartney three. And so, of course, this did even more speculation than you usually get. And I was like, okay, this might happen. It might not happen. I don't know. So far, we haven't got any confirmation. Well, now, if you go to Paul McCartney on Spotify and you play any track from either of those albums, what happens is you get a video that shows in the background. And the video is the, of the album cover of those two albums with a, a hand rolling dice. And the dice rolls and it comes up on a three. And so that is definitely Paul's uh, confirmation that he is doing this and we're going to get a McCartney three because there's no way that wow. would randomly appear on Spotify. You know, wow. it, it just appeared, I think, yesterday or the day before. So uh, uh, so we do know there's going to be a McCartney three coming out. Supposedly it's coming out December 11th. Um, we are excited about that. So people are still and he's producing just wonderful albums. His last album was one of my favorite well it probably was my favorite of all the solo McCartney albums and it was fantastic and just uh, and it was kind of a uh, homage to Sgt. Pepper and and it was just beautiful it was called the Egypt Station and what a great album that is uh, I will link to my Spotify playlist of it because I've created my own running order that I think is is what just with it that incorporates all the he released he recorded like 25 songs for the thing and then released 16 of them. And then over time has been releasing like singles of the other ones and, and so forth and deluxe packages. But I put them all together in kind of an order that makes sense. And uh, it carries on. It's a concept album. So it carries on the concept and uh, it's fun. So anyway, check that out in the show notes if you'd like to hear Paul McCartney and if you have a Spotify account or you can set up a free Spotify account and listen to all you want. Um, okay. Then the other thing I was going to say, last thing is, is David Crosby is also really he's really he's released like no albums for decades or whatever it seems like and then all of a sudden he started releasing albums and he's released like four in a row like in like four years five, I think five years over the course of five years he's released four albums there are four of his best albums ever I would highly suggest you listen to any of those David Crosby albums for me and for my money Sky Trails is probably his best one and that's uh I think he released that in 2018, maybe 2017. Great album. The Monkees released a new album in 2016, 2017. That was an amazing was album. Three, three left, yes. So yeah, with months. the three of them. And it, it was their best album that they released since the 60s. Uh, just uh, amazing performances these folks are doing now. They're not, like you say, not getting played on the radio, not anything. You got to kind of search them out. But Spotify is your best friend for trying out different music from different people. And I love Spotify. But over to Kathy, you were going to say anything else oh, about that? Well, well, I just, I had a fun way of bringing it back, actually back to uh, uh, Frank Sinatra. Sure. I'm, I'm so impressed uh, by uh, your love of music, Daryl, and yours, Terry, and how much you do research and what great fans you all are. And as a historian, I'm um, happy for historians of the future who want to know about the fans who love music that they can now go to archived forums and things like that and they'll be able to know so much more about yes. what people today loved whereas here we have to just speculate by what people who might who watched the Frank Sinatra spectacular back in 65 we can only speculate what their fandom was and what they felt about it because we don't have it gathered well uh, a, a colleague of mine recently found from the beginnings of Frank Sinatra's uh, star career that of all people, Rudy Valley in the mid 40s um, lent his secretary, his right hand woman to the record label to help form Frank Sinatra fan clubs. 
Oh. This is back when, so Frankie's, you know, appearing yeah. on the radio, doing those uh, Paramount concerts, you know, getting all the Bobby Soxers to faint or the chickens in Warner Brothers cartoons who yes. faint and, <laughs> and produce eggs at hearing of Frank Sinatra. Well, the, so this um, amazing woman, whose name I can't remember, she started corresponding with the young Frank Sinatra fans and, and connecting them to each other in this pre-internet world helping them find ways to get together and share their love of Frank Sinatra. And a lot of this is documented in her, uh, her collection, which is connected to the Rudy Valley connection in um, uh, uh, Thousand Oaks, California. The Thousand Oaks, California, I believe public library is this rare and incredibly rich archive of entertainment history and memorabilia. And so it, it, it took extraordinary people and someone who remembered to save this stuff. Yes. But to think so, historians today have one source where you could hear ecstatic fans talking about their new love with the same enthusiasm that you are bringing you all to the Rat Pack or to Paul McCartney even now. And um, it's just I'm explaining that it's, it's difficult to be a historian of fan culture in those days before the internet. Correct. And Correct. what riches we have now that people can make their own Spotify lists, make their own homages, make videos, right. make TikToks, and, and correspond on forums. And, and historians 20 years from now are just going to be overwhelmed happily with all the stuff they've got. But as I said, if there's anybody out there who really digs early Frank Sinatra and wants to know, uh, uh, hear from the girls who were fainting, if you go to the Thousand Oaks Library... Awesome. There's awesome. Caches, caches of letters and correspondence. Well, okay, so hopefully Kathy, they start putting some of that stuff on the internet too, because because as more and more libraries are starting to push more things out there, it's charming because yeah. you can go uh, see and listen to things that they have in their library that they're making more publicly available instead of having to go physically to their library to see it and hear it. So, so Kathy, I'm curious to know from your research, um, can you tell us or can you speculate whether those uh, fainting Bobby Soxers were genuinely reacting or were they performing uh were they paid to to pass out uh, think? i think it was genuine in the same way that the same mix of beetle maniac you know yep. uh, uh uh people are uh, both um it was truly a, a sort of a watershed of teenage culture of a space where girls up through women could um you could have the fantasy boyfriend Instead of just the guy next door, here's this guy with the impossible voice. And he didn't have to look like a football player. He's young and skinny and kind of, yep. you know, that's uh, yeah. it's, uh, all the things that, that um, we've said about the appeal of the Beatles in the 60s as these sort of safe, um, uh, safer uh, 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 imaginary boyfriends that you don't have to commit to and raise his babies much as you might like it. Um, uh, that's what I think an earlier generation were able to uh, experience with young Frankie. So uh, yeah, I agree. And I think on Terry's point that, um, you know, some of the girls fainting, I'm sure we're trying to show hey, I am more into him than you are to the other girls. Exactly. Not that anybody arranged it, but that they just might go, oh, I feel a little faint. And then they're like, oh, I just pat. And, and so it shows how much I love him. Right. More than it, you. It is, it, it's, it's being able to indeed show your devotion as well as the excitement of the moment. Yeah, I, I'm sure some of them really fainted. I mean, certainly you, you, people talk about concerts. Anybody who does concerts talks about people that faint in their audiences just because there's so many people there it's so hot and everything else that it wouldn't surprise me that he was the first to maybe get these massive audiences that where people would faint in the front and and certainly any anyone any security in any uh, venue realizes hey they're always going to be fainters that faint the, and then they have to pull out well indeed uh, for the beatles they said also girls wet their pants that it is yeah uh, it's we're well, that's probably because they were pinched in for hours waiting for the Beatles to perform <laughs> and couldn't get out of there. So it's like. <laughs> no. But uh, uh, indeed, um, uh, some people, it's always been uh, worrisome when young women act out in emotional ways. Yes. Ah, yes. We don't know what to do with this. But on the other hand, from the fans' point of view, the pleasure and fun and excitement and emotion. Yay. So. Well, I'll tell you what, hold up your can of tab again if you've got it still with you. 
Okay, so she's One got a tab that six six left. <laughs> oh goodness! Yeah, they're going until, away until until my petition holds, and I write to the Coca Cola company every day now, going say bring back my tab, bring <laughs> back my tab. But uh, other products from from the same era from 1965, the cool girls were drinking tab. So yeah, yeah. Well, and and to tie that into me a little bit, I go by Dr Pepper is my. Uh, screen name or whatever if you go to Steve Hoffman forum that's me uh, the thing I'm currently doing over there is we've gone through every Paul McCartney song from his solo years where we talk song by song by song and and give reviews of it and talk about it and we ran out of songs oh very cool look at jelly belly hey. <laughs> nice <laughs> the things you run on yeah, so you're talking about every anyway. Anyway, I will say uh, currently. Then we switch gears because we ran out of songs. Uh, got to his most current ones, which of course in a few months we'll have a McCartney three to talk about those songs. But then we went back, and now we're going through each Paul McCartney song that he sang with the Beatles. So we're up through. I think we're going to hit uh, "Help" uh, the album. Uh oh. Um, and can so you, we're right I at the crux her? of the very best of the McCartney where it really takes off. So I will link that in the show notes too, if you want to come on and join us in that conversation, because we've sort of lost a lot, a lot of people that were there at the beginning have dwindled off. So there's just a few of us that keep on working on it, but, uh, but we'd love to have you guys come and share what you think of the Beatles songs. Cause I love to get other people's uh, viewpoints on it. So any listeners come check us out and you can see, uh, what I'm posting over there and everything too. I try to post pretty much a song every other day sort of thing is, is what I do. And then we focus on that and I do YouTube videos of the, of the performances and so forth. So it's fun. Anyway, uh, I, I guess that's it probably for this. Oh, we'll tie it into Jack Benny right before we go because we're always trying to tie things to Jack Benny. Uh, Johnny Carson does do a little mini Jack Benny impression in th this performance. See if you can spot it. It is, he does not, I don't even think he says well or anything. He doesn't do the hand thing, but it's, it's a subtle one, but you can tell he's doing it. It's a reaction shot and he, he does something in Jack's voice and he also does his body language of the Jack would do uh, right at the end of this to when, they, when they're all together. Um, he's, he's getting kind of a short shifted on the microphone or something. And so he does it sort of Benny pout sort of thing that he does. So Anyway, so that's fun. Uh, anything else before we go? We'll cut it there. All right, we're good. So uh, enjoy, folks. This is a great performance. And like Terry says, there's no other one that really exists like this that captures all these guys at their peak. And at least watch the beginning to see uh, Johnny and then see uh, uh, Dean Martin and just his wonderful performance. And then, of course, definitely catch the Sammy because the Sammy is just amazing. And it's something you don't see a lot of Sammy. It doesn't feel like as much as the other guys just doing that and uh, performing song after song. So thanks everybody. Enjoy. And we'll see you next time for some more, one more Johnny Carson thing, a tribute piece that we're going to do with uh, him on the Jack Benny show. So enjoy. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Frank Sinatra Spectacular. And to immediately get into our show, I want to bring out a very wonderful, wonderful personality of show business. The host of tonight's show, you all know him, Johnny Carson. and I don't have one commercial. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. As uh, you know, there are several things going on tonight with this show. 
or halfway house, Dismas House. Not only are they doing this show here, but they are televising this show and sending it to several cities around the country for closed circuit in Chicago and New York, to mention two of them. And on top of that, along with the show, CBS is also filming a special of the career of Frank Sinatra. And they've been following Frank around all day. <laughs> and that will go on in the fall under the title Crusader Rabbit. <laughs> I should explain right from the outset that I was a last minute substitution tonight. And I hope you're not too disappointed. Mr. Joy Bishop was supposed to be. Uh, Joy injured his back and was not able to make it, and Frank called me, and I was delighted to come out here for this cause, because I believe in it. <laughs> Actually, what happened, Joy slipped a disc backing out in Frank's presence. <laughs> you didn't know that's the way you leave a room when Frank, oh, yes, you <laughs> my liege, may I leave? And you back out of the room. Well, I'm delighted to be here. Actually, Georgie Jessel was supposed to be on this show tonight, but he's exhausted from reading his Father's Day cards today. <laughs> I love to, to, to work for a live audience. I'm so used to television. I'm going to try to forget that the cameras are even here tonight. And uh, we stopped the hotel and we got out of the limousines today. And as you know, the Teamsters have a great deal to do with this. And the welcome wasn't too good today. They yanked the driver off my limousine as I was coming in. <laughs> but I like to do these things because it gets me away from television. And as we were getting out today, some lady said, I think it's Johnny Carson. And she says, do you mind if I lie down to see? <laughs> So if you would feel more comfortable, <laughs> or you don't recognize me in an upright position, I will understand tonight. As a matter of fact, I hope this doesn't sound like bragging or ego, but I read last year that the birth rate in this country has dropped appreciably in the United States, and I like to feel that my show is partly responsible. <laughs> for this decline. Uh, you know, it may turn out that I could be more reliable than any of it, you know. And, uh, <laughs> if I could just get approved by the Catholic Church, I'm in. <laughs> I uh, have never appeared on stage with a drink in my hand before. And the only reason I do so now is to set the stage. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be. I didn't. Did he introduce me? I just walked on. Somebody, somebody pushed me out here. I don't know what. It's all right, though. Oh, all right. But uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Frank uh, asked me to come over. Uh, he told me to come here. <laughs> and uh, just this morning, we we flew in. We didn't even take the airplane. We just flew right. <laughs> We do that on weekends, and uh, <laughs> you miss the whole show. <laughs> but uh, right now, I've had a very special request, but I'm going to sing anyhow. And, uh, but this, oh, look at this. This ain't got no printing on it at all. <laughs> we're uh, going to go any place? <laughs> no, we're going to sing a few, excuse me. We're going to sing a few, oh boy. But here's a little song. Uh, 
Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll look at the introduction. You play whatever you want. This is from that wonderful picture, Lay Back and Read. <laughs> Send me the pillow uh, that you dream of. Still care for you. Send me the pillow that you dream of. So, darling, I can dream on it, too. Each night while I'm sleeping, oh, so lonely. In dreams, I'll share your love that once was mine. Send me the pillow that you dream on So darling, I can dream on it too Time you're ready, boy. Trailer for sailor rent. The rooms are left fifty cents. No phones, no fools, no pets. Ain't got no cigarettes of it. Two hours of pushing broom by the I'm a man of means by no means King of the road Third box car, midnight train Destination, bang of main Old worn out suits and shoes Don't pay no union dues I smoke old smokies I have found Short but not too big around I'm a man of means by no means King of the road I'm every engine on every train While all of the children and all of their names Every hand out in every town Every lock that ain't locked where no one's around to sing Trailer for sailor rent The rooms are let 50 cents No phones, no food If we're lucky, folks, he might finish I have found Short but not too big around I'm a Maybe he finds out he's not sitting down. By no means. Queen of the road. King of the road. King of the road. King of the road. Boy, he made it.
Thank you very much. No. No. You're very kind. No, I'm not through. No. No, I'm I'm just starting, Jack. <laughs> This surprised me, too, boy. <laughs> now I... Boy, you sure know how to hurt a fella, Dean. <laughs> Why you got all your shorts on backwards? Uh, no, a drink. Drink. Now, this is only a gag. I don't drink anymore. I, I freeze it now, and I eat it like a popsicle. <laughs> But you just remember, you know, a drink never hurt nobody at all. You just remember the great words of Mr. Joey Lewis. He says, you're not drunk if you can lay on the floor without holding on. How would you know? <laughs> Joey and I were together at my home about two weeks ago. We were in my den one morning, swimming, <laughs> and he mixed himself a peculiar drink, and I said, what are you drinking down there, Joe? And he looked down at me. <laughs> he said, Scots and carrot juice. <laughs> yeah, I said, why? He said, I get drunk, but I see good. <laughs> but, you know, I want to say one thing in all seriousness. I feel sorry for you people that don't drink. I mean it, because when you wake up in the morning, that's as good as you're going to feel all day. <laughs> waiting to come on. Let's do six or seven more and we'll get right off. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves somebody sometimes. Everybody falls in love somehow. Something in your kids just told me that sometime is now. Everybody finds somebody someplace. There's no telling where love may appear. Something in my heart keeps saying that someplace is here. If I had you in my shower, <laughs> then every minute, every hour, every boy would find what I found in your arms. Everybody loves somebody sometimes. And all of my dreams were overdue. Excuse me, Jerry. <laughs> took your show away, huh? Uh, or someone like you. If I had it in my power, I would arrange for every girl to have your charm. Then every minute and every hour Every boy would find what I found in your arms Everybody loves somebody sometimes And although my dreams were overdue Like 
happy heart sing Your love has given me wings Penso che un sogno così non ritorna mai più Mi dipingi con le mani nella faccia di blu E improvviso tenito dal vento rapito Oh yeah E cominciavo a volare nel cielo infinito Tony Martin, I'll break his legs <laughs> Down each avenue, the street or strata You can see him disappearing two by two On an evening in Roma Do they take him for espresso? Yeah, I guess so On each lover's arm, a girl I wish I knew Even in Roma Though they're grinning and mandolin and in sunny Italy The beginning has just begun when the sun goes down So please meet me in the plaza near your casa I am only one and one is much too few on an evening in Roma don't know what the country's coming to but in Rome do as they do will you on an evening in Roma on an evening in Roma sottocelle de Roma on an evening in Roma Thank you very much. I'd like to do some more for you, but I, I'm lucky I remembered these. <laughs> but I, I will just sing one little more before uh, the cats get ready back here. They got to do something. It's not. I, I, uh, I don't need this at all. I got over $300 in four different banks. This, this don't bother me. So, and I'd like to have you meet my wonderful pianist. Not only is he a fine piano player, a wonderful composer of songs, a great musician, but this young man has been a communist for 32 years. <laughs> but I'm very fortunate in having him with me because he's responsible for our great big hit, Everybody Loves Somebody. He wrote it, Mr. Ken Lane. Everybody Loves Somebody. Ken, baby? One course and we'll get out because I left a drink. <laughs> well, you ain't nobody till somebody loves you. Don't, I give me a headache with you. <laughs> you ain't nobody till somebody cares. You might be king. No world and it's gold All the gold will bring you happiness Until you're growing old Yeah, the world Still is the same Don't ever change it As sure as the stars, I got enough gas to go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you nobody, the somebody really loves you. So grab, ooh, grab your side, somebody. I said, grab yourself somebody, grab yourself.
I don't know how to introduce this gentleman. I like to think of him as a friend. He is probably one of the most versatile, multi-talented people in all of show business, which has been said many, many times. And I would just like to say very simply, would you welcome Mr. Sammy Davis, Jr. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Look out, Count. This will be my shining hour, calm and happy and bright. Through it all, your face will flower through the darkness of the night. Like the lights of home before me, or an angel watching o'er me. This will be my shining hour Till I'm with you again This will be my shining hour Through it all your face will flower Like the lights of home before me I've got Basie watching o'er me I thank you. May I say what a tremendous thrill it is for, for me to represent the ethnic groups. Uh, <laughs> this is my first time to appear in, in St. Louis in about 14 years. Uh, the last time I was here, I was at a theater with my dad and my uncle, which has recently been torn down. <laughs> I, I, was, I, I say this quite unashamedly. I, I, I was in burlesque with my folks. We were the board of act and we worked the grand many times. And, and it's the only place I ever worked until now. So I, I, I thank you. I represent sort of the, the, the New York scene with, with Broadway, I guess, because that's where I'm currently involved in Golden Boy. So I would like... Thank you. I would like to sing a song from a Broadway show, if I may. Not my show a show that was written by my very good friend, Mr. Anthony Newley. Uh, it's called Roar of the Grease Paint and the Smell of the Crowd. And this is his hit song from that show, with your kind permission. Who can I turn to? When nobody needs me My heart wants to know And so I must go Where destiny leads me With no star to guide me the day the 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to do one thing that I do whenever I get a chance to, to do a show like this. I always do one number in which I feature my drummer. His name is Michael Silver. Now, there are jazz drummers, there are small group drummers, big band drummers, and there are personality drummers. In my humble opinion, this is the finest theatrical drummer that we have in our business today, with due respects to all the gentlemen. So, with your kind permission, this is just drums and voice, and we have fun with this. Please join us if you will. The gong ging, gong ging, the gong gi gong. Remember, Michael, play regular and no messages. I've got you deep in the heart of me, so deep in my heart that you're almost a part of me. I've got you under my skin. I have tried so not to give in. I said to myself, this affair. Should I resist? Well, maybe you know darn well. I've got you, got you under my skin. I'd sacrifice anything, come what might, for the sake of having you near. In spite of that lonely voice that calls in the night, says these words in my ear. Don't you know, little schmool? You never can win. Use your mentality, wake up to reality, but each time I do, just the thought of you makes me stop before I begin, didn't I tell you that I got you, I got you under my skin, and I like you, 
I like you under my skin. It's a little lumpy, but you're under my skin. hear about well baby I got news for you I'm from St. Louis too so naturally I got my doubt you got them jumping by the wayside a feeling I ain't gonna know you came a long way from St. Louis but baby you still got a long way to go wow a long way to go about this. <laughs> this here is the monkey, see? And then there's the jerk. And the thing I did before is the mashed potatoes. whole dance I get such a pain you will never <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You are, you are more than kind. I, I hope you don't mind if I do this. Actually, I need it in terms of the next song. I would like to do a saloon song for you, if I may. Uh, and I borrow that phrase from my, my, my dear friend and buddy and the man who is responsible for this evening, uh, Mr. Frank Sinatra, because uh, that's his phrase. And he is responsible for this evening. And this is not the... I think somebody should say it. But I know of no other individual that could put on 
this type of show in the way he did. It was marvelous the way he just picked up a phone and said, be there. <laughs> I immediately called Martin Luther King and he gave me the okay and I came. <laughs> No, I really don't, because I go well, like usually when somebody says be there, I'm ready to march. Yeah, baby, anything you want. <laughs> Take no chances, boy, you know. When I go to do benefits, I march with everybody. You know? I found myself well, marching with some cats with some pillowcases on their head one day. My conductor, George Rhodes, went like this in the sidelines. Psst, psst, psst. I think you were marching with the wrong group here. <laughs> I know you colored and Jewish, and this is ridiculous, baby. <laughs> oh, incidentally, let me say this now, and I make a joke about myself, so you know, and I admit this fully, it is true that I'm an American Negro who, who is, uh, I have adopted Judaism as a faith. Everybody knows that, and they, all the comics make jokes about it. Uh, and I do it in self-defense. But I would also like to let you know something that I'm probably you're not aware of. My mother is a Puerto Rican. My mother's maiden name was Alvira Sanchez. This is true, Emmis. And <laughs> <laughs> so that makes, that means I'm colored, Jewish, and Puerto Rican. When I move into a neighborhood, I wipe it out. <laughs> That's it. I wipe the whole neighborhood out. Ain't nobody left. Give me that wonderful song that I love so much. One for my baby, will you? This song, One for My Baby and One for the Row, was written many years ago by Harold Allen and Johnny Mercer. It has been performed by the greatest performers in the world. But it was written for Mr. Fred Astaire. Now, I don't care what singers have sung it, and of course, my dear friend, the man who comes on in a minute or two, if they can get him out of his room. <laughs> it's his song, and he does it so marvelously, but I would like to show you what might happen if we were just to imagine a stare doing it, because a stare being a hoofer, which is my first love, when he walks down the street, just to see him walk down the street is worth the price of admission. It's quarter to three, there's no one in the place except you and me. So, said Mark Joe, got a little story you ought to know. Well, from that one move alone, such quelling, I tell you. <laughs> but to see this man's kind of job, I kept the thinking, maybe it might be kind of fun to have some other singers sing it. Starting out first, not in terms of ridicule or any other reason, but simply because of the fact that this man contributed something that no one else will ever be able to duplicate or to fill the gap that now that he's missing. Out of sheer and total respect, just a few bars of Mr. Nat King Cole. It's quarter to three There's no one in the place Except you and me I'm feeling so sad Wish you'd make the music dreamy and sad. Mr. Billy Eckstein. Thank you. I could tell you a lie, but you got to be to do your care. So make it one my baby <laughs> and one more 
Tony Bennett. I'm feeling so sad. I wish you'd, I wish you'd make the music. Really and sad. Mel Torme. I could tell you a lot, but you've got to be true to your code. So make it one for my baby And one more for the road Thank you, Lane. You never know what I would Say a lot of things to say Louis Armstrong My good friend who was here earlier in the evening, <laughs> Mr. Dean Martin. Which way is the audience, Pally? <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> you, you, I know you getting it. And you're <laughs> too close. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, if you didn't mind. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dismas House, I present our hoodlum singer. Getting married in the morning A ding dong, the bells are gonna chime Kick up a rumpus Don't lose your compass Get me to the church on time I'm getting married in the morning Dressed up and looking in my prime Pull out the stopper We'll have a whopper Get me to the church on time if I am dancing, roll up the 
floor. If I am whistling, roll up the door. I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong, they're gonna chime. I forgot the words all of a sudden. Get me to the church. Get me to the church. Pete's sake, you get me to the church all the time. If I am whistling right out the door, I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong, they're gonna chime. Girls, come and kiss me. Say that you miss me. Get me to the church. Get me to the church. For Pete's sake, get me to the church. to the moon let me play up there with those stars let me see what life is like on jupiter and mars in other words hold my hand in other words darling kiss me Fill my heart with song, let me swing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words. You've got to have to move this. They call you Lady Luck, but there is room for doubt. At times you have a very unusual way of running out. You're on. This date with me, the pickings have been lush, and yet before this evening is over, you might give me the brush, you 
might forget your manners You might refuse to stay And so the best that I can do is pray Luck be lady tonight Luck be a lady tonight Luck if you've ever been a lady to begin with Luck be a lady tonight Luck let a gentleman see Just how nice a dame you can be the guys you've been with but the luck of be a lady with me a lady doesn't leave her escort it isn't fair and it's not nice a lady doesn't wander all over the room and then blow on some other guy's dice why don't we keep this party polite never get out of my sight stick with me baby i'm the guy that you came in with luck be a lady tonight Luck let a gentleman see Just how nice a dame you can be I know the way you treated other men you've been with But luck be a lady with me A lady doesn't leave her escort It isn't fair it's not night A lady doesn't wander All over the room And then blow On some other guy's dice How about we Keep this party polite Never get out of my sight Stick with me, baby I'm the guy that you came in with I don't know if they're cloudy or bright Cause I only have eyes For you, dear The moon may be high I can't see a thing in the sky I only have eyes For you We're in a garden Or on a crowded uh, avenue You are here And so am I Maybe millions of people get by 
they all disappear from you. So am I. Maybe millions of people get by. here, but I don't think you'll mind too much. I've got you under my skin. I've got you deep in the heart of me. So deep in my heart that you're really a part of me. I've got you under my skin I tried so not to give in I've said to myself this affair it never will go so well but why should I try to resist when baby I know damn well that I've got you under my skin I would sacrifice anything, come what might, for the sake of having you near, in spite of a warning voice. Comes in the night, it repeats, it repeats in my ear. Don't you know, you fool, you ain't never gonna win. Use your mentality, wake up to reality. But each time I do, just the thought of you makes me stop before I begin. Because I've got you under my skin. Come what might for the sake of having you near In spite of a warning voice Comes in the night, it repeats how it screams in my ear Don't you know, you fool, there ain't no chance to win Why don't you use your mentality Stand up to reality And each time I do, just the thought of you Because I've got you under my skin And you grab me under my skin Thank you Thank you very much
very much. I would merely like to take a second to say hello to you officially, not only in song, but to chat with you for a minute. Uh, I'm delighted that we could make it here, and I would like to personally thank all of you marvelous people for making it possible, because without an audience, we're dead. D-E-D. -E and uh, Dean was that way when we arrived this afternoon, but we got him together again. And uh, this concept, this show, came about, oh, maybe a year ago. In my chat once with Harold Gibbons in California, we talked about it. And we kept trying to find a date, and eventually we found a date. And I'm, we're very pleased to be here. And I would like to thank all of the people who did come from both sides of the country to join us here tonight. I think they're splendid people, and you are splendid people for making the contribution. And I applaud you. Now, where's the bar? <laughs> we got some music here for you, a couple more songs. What do we got there? Yeah, okay. Well, we got about, <laughs> Dean keeps saying, hurry up, how many more? It's all right, Dean, keep drinking, you'll be all right. <laughs> when you find, get off while I'm a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Please be kind Handle my heart with care And Please be kind Just hang on This is all so grand My dreams are on parade If you just understand why they'll never, never fade Just to tell me your love sincere mm -hmm. Please be kind Please be kind Wait for me, wait for me <laughs> You got a beat like a cop Please be kind Cause if you If you love me, please, yeah, please be kind. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah! This is my first affair, so please be kind. Just tell me your love sincere. It sure is, and baby. Please be kind. Make sure you're not too strained. Yeah. And please be kind. Oh, yeah. Cause if you leave me, babe, I know my heart's gonna lose its mind. You already lost it. You lost it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> please be kind. Be kind. Be How many more do you think he's going to do, Sam? Thank you very much. I don't know, but he shows sure sing good for a white fella, don't he? <laughs> you make me feel so young. You make me feel like spring has sprung. Every time I see you grin, I'm such a happy the individual the moment that you speak i want to go play hide and seek i want to go and bounce the moon 
just like a toy balloon. You and I, we are just like a couple of tots. Running around the meadow, picking up all those forget-to-me-nots. You make me feel so young. You make me feel there are songs to be sung. Bells to be rung and a wonderful fling to be flung. And even when I'm old and gray, I'm gonna feel the way I do today. Because you make me feel so young. Make me young. You make me feel like spring sprung. Yes. Every time I see you grin, what happens? I'm such a happy individual. The moment that you speak, what do I say? I wanna go play hide and seek. I wanna go and bounce the moon, yeah. just like a big balloon. You and I, we are just like a couple of tots, and we're running around the meadow, snatching up all those forget to me nots. You make me young, you make me feel there are songs to be sung, bells to be rung, and a wonderful fling to be blown. Louis 
upstairs. Stand you as you St. Louis is. I will give him St. Louis is. One town that won't let you down. It's my kind of I've been waiting back there so long, I was about to call some troops. <laughs> but I was going to do another song here, you know. But let's hold it down there. Do what? I almost went on a wagon. <laughs> the only reason he's got a good tan, he found a bar with a skylight. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Say, as long as we're all here together, why don't we have a drink? Oh. <laughs> you know, it's very sweet of you to bring me a little libation because I was getting very thirsty. Yeah. You know. You looked a little thirsty, but please be kind. You look nice, though. You boys all came out dressed nice tonight. Yeah. I like that. It's very nice. This is... Uh... I say, if you're going to look dead, dress dead. Yeah. <laughs> this is my drip dry. This is my pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'll tell uh, you something, maybe if this don't straighten my hair, nothing will. <laughs> oh, I... Hey, Sam. Sam, I got an idea. <laughs> I'd like to thank the NAACP for this wonderful trophy. Put me down! Sam. Hey, Sam. Mr. Chairman! No, not here. No, not here. No, that's for another four years. I got a big one, baby. <laughs> thank you, team. Thank you, team. There you go, Bill. Well, thank you so very I, I much. I've never drank in my life on a stage. Here I am with this crowd. I hope you have a lot of time from the Midwest. we be around here, you know. And there's an Ed Show. I'd like to take just one second to do something that I think... It already would be, took 40 minutes. ...would be very nice. <laughs> no, really, it would be very nice. Today is Father's Day. First of all, I'd like to wish all of you fellow fathers happy Father's Day. Secondly... Oh, you mother. <laughs> yeah. And all you mothers, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> now, I, naturally. Now, we have a little lady in the... In the wings, who was my daughter? She's 17 years old. Today. Yeah. She was born on Father's her Day. Her birthday. She came here with me for the for the trip, and it's her birthday. It's my daughter Tina's birthday. Would you say hello to my Tina, daughter? Tina. 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 Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yes, you did some singing impressions. Thing. How about coming over here and doing a couple of uh, the actors that you do? You know those marvelous people on the screen? Yes, yeah, some of like those things, you know. Well, why don't you like do Lionel Barrymore and all that kind of well, stuff? Well, do we have time to do well, that? We do we have plenty of time, Bobby. Yes, well, I think we just bought the building. I'm not well, sure. Don't you do <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's indeed my pleasure to get a chance. I didn't know I was going to get a chance to do this. May I, may I just, Will first you of all... Will you hold us a second? 
Oh. I would like, I would like at this time to start off by doing one of everyone's favorites, Mr. Jimmy Cagney. And what I must thrill. say, this is probably one of my favorites. I love doing it, so if I may, Jimmy Cagney. Well, we'll see what they think, Sam. <laughs> you dirty rat. <laughs> All you want me to do is take the 50 Gs while you play potsies with the cops. Is that so? You did it to my brother in the back. I'm going to do it to you. All right, buddy. What did you bring me out? What did you bring me out for? To break up the set? What is this? <laughs> so I came all the way from New York for? Oh, good. Ladies and gentlemen. Heavens to Bessie. I got a phone to in. <laughs> I would like at this time to do, you know, who cares? Mr. Kerry Grant. This oh, is one of yes. the best ones that I do, ladies and gentlemen. No, oh, Judy, 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 you can't take a baby out of a man's life and expect him to go on living the way he has been. It's not right and it's all not right, fair. It's, it's all right. right. <laughs> What's next, Sam? <laughs> I am going to do probably the hardest impression that anyone does, and it's one of my best. Mr. Is. Anthony Quinn. <laughs> How about that? You, you dirty rat. rat. <laughs> oh, get it to my brother in the back, see? You're going to get it. Now, let's, wait a minute now, wait a minute. I have a chance to do... You asked me to do them, let me do them for crying out loud. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try to... you sing a medley of race riots. That's right. <laughs> you ain't in till you see colored Jewish yeah. pickets, I'll tell you that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we'll go down to the Benet Gay. <laughs> okay. Who's that? Ladies and gentlemen, been a lot of call for one, that. Of the, one of the great beloved actors of our time, Mr. Clark Gable. And in New York, the number is Murray Hill 8000. <laughs> Scarlett, that crazy about you, honey. Dabby it, baby. You got class, charm, personality, you got money. Yeah, I've got money, haven't you? Yeah, I know it, baby. It's all right. I did it. It's okay. Wonderful, baby. How about that? Wonderful, uh, Dean. Ladies and gentlemen, this is... Hey, enough kibitzing. Oh, shut your face. <laughs> I work... I work half my life to do clever lines. You set a mic down and do some shtick and get <laughs> screams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> How do you get Mr. Lyndon B. Johnson? Mr. President. You dirty rat. You get off of there. I'd like to do one that nobody can do. Yeah, now what one is that? That what one is that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, you step on my swage one more time. <laughs> that's not his shoes, that's just his swage. I'd like to do the kingfish. Well, we are seeing the thing here. How are we going to do it? If all the women in Texas were as ugly as your mama, the Lone Ranger gonna be alone for a long time! Yes, thank you. Isn't it wonderful what they're doing for Dismas House? <laughs> Kill that one here, the ocean? Oh, get out. Oh. Hey, Sam. Why don't, we, why don't we thank the bands for being so much? Why don't to that we do that, Sam? Maybe I didn't like either band. <laughs> May I? No, really. 
<laughs> I see. America's only Jewish Muslim, Irving X. my racket. Get off my foot. Ah, listen, you really want to tell you about it, ladies and gentlemen? Just lay uh, on it. I think that the three of us... Tell them a couple things here. <laughs> you just lay it on Is it, eh? announce this? I just thought he might say... We're going to, we're going to uh, ask the audience, and we are going to join in in applauding both orchestras here tonight. I think that's swell. <laughs> really, magnificent job. Mr. John Bates here, the wonderful orchestra. And Quincy orchestra. Jones, who conducts it for me. And Please, George Rose. Stand and up, ladies and gentlemen. George Rhodes, Michael Silver, stand up there. Mr. Quincy Jones, directing there. Oh, you told him that? Well, you know, you have to explain it a lot because we all look alike. Let us pray. Uh, <laughs> dearly beloved, oh, excuse me. I, hey, could we all finish by doing it's one not number? Can we? May, May we? we? Not uh, can we? May we? Never in the same way. May we, Sam? Not can we? <laughs> <laughs> fight, 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 fight. Oh, if I find out that's true, my heart is broken. <laughs> may we? Can we? May we? Can we? John? May we? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. May we at French. Okay. We? All right. <laughs> we can use that. Well, stuff. what Let's about doing a number balls. together? Yeah, now you talk. We're gonna Could we do Birth of the Blues together and each person take Why a little not, bit? Sam? Gee, that sounds like a swell idea. I'll get Mickey and Judy and we'll build a barn. <laughs> When's the last time you've seen an Italian cut? I'm gonna cut him. You know, he touches me one more time. <laughs> he ain't got no chance. I'd like to get out of this act, if you don't mind. I gotta catch a plane. Yeah, want the mics closer? You want the mics closer? Closer. closer. All right. It'll be my guess. Then we'll saying. just be one. <laughs> We don't, we don't need this? We don't need this. I thought it was separate but equal. <laughs> I haven't started off. It's my number. If you don't mind. Oh, I ain't gonna fight with all your troops. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, if we ever get in the lead, you two cats are first. <laughs> Would you give hey, me no way, key? baby. Go ahead. <laughs> give me a keynote, George, please. If anybody wants, put on my track. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What is with you with okay. the foot? They oh, 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 there's shout. a gangster sleeping upstairs. Easy. Quiet, Sam. Subtlety, baby. All right, sweet cakes. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. They... No, 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 no. The guy in the back can't hear you. Go ahead, a little more, baby. Loosen up. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you may be my leader, but I'm going to punch you right in your mouth. <laughs> oh, they. That's hey. All right. I got to catch a train soon. Are you going <laughs> to... About. I gotta go to a bar mitzvah in a minute. <laughs> they heard the breeze through the trees singing weird, weird melodies, and they named that the start of the blues. And from a jail came a whale. From a down hearted frail, and they call that the start of the blues. From a whippoorwill high on a hill. How about that? It, and they rehearsed it. How does it feel to sit in the back and of the bus? Then I hear up the news that the Southland really gave birth. Let's give Dean a chance. 
Thank you, but we had all the fun. <laughs> Gee, what a wonderful night this has been. And as Frank has already said, what a, how much fun it is to perform in front of people who are having a good time. <laughs>